Morning Trainiacs, Daniela Reef versus Lucy Charles. <laughs> Clash of the Titans. Is Lucy Charles gonna be the next Daniela Reef? Can Daniela Reef hold off the surging Lucy Charles? We're gonna talk about all that. So since Lucy Charles stormed up to second place on the podium at the Hawaii Ironman World Championships in 2017, a lot of people have been speculating that she would be the next athlete to unseat Daniela Reef in the full Ironman and half Ironman distance. Now, this past week where she again placed second on the podium in behind Daniela Reef at the half Ironman World Championships in Port Elizabeth, South Africa, a lot of people have been asking me, is Lucy Charles and when is Lucy Charles going to unseat Daniela Reef? Now, with her being so young, with Daniela Reef having a tough year in 2017, I think that that topic was a lot more contentious and uncertain at the end of 2017. However, with Daniela Reef being so dominant in 2018 and Lucy Charles getting stronger over the course of 2018, I think that this is probably one of the most uncertain answers that I'm going to be able to give for any heads up matchup that's out there in triathlon today, but we are going to try. So let's analyze point for point, swim, bike, run, and some of the intangibles, how Lucy Charles and Daniela Reef stack up. Starting with the swim. Obviously, Lucy Charles being a former Olympic hopeful for Great Britain, missing out on going to the Olympics, I think by just one spot, and then moving into open water racing, she is probably the best swimmer in triathlon period. And we're talking like for men or women. Now she might not be as fast as the men, but relative to her gender and the times that are being put out, there is nobody even close really to challenging Lucy Charles, besides maybe Lauren Brandon. Lauren's really good too. But when it comes to Lucy Charles versus Daniela Reef, Lucy Charles is going to come out of the water ahead of her every single time. However, What's happening there is because Lucy's such a strong swimmer, in a lot of cases, she is going to be working on the swim entirely on her own. Unless she can pair up with a Lauren Brandon, with a Laurence Delisle, somebody like that, who has a really good swim pedigree, she's gonna be out there potentially tiring herself out and coming out somewhere around two to three minutes ahead of Daniela Reef. Daniela Reef comes from an ITU sports background where she had to be an amazing swimmer, so she is an amazing swimmer coming out in the front pack and she has been smart enough to basically just sit into the front pack and making sure that she gets out in that front pack, able to attack on the bike, but because she sat in the front pack, not at the front of it, she's kind of been pulled along and I think that potentially she might be a little bit fresher coming onto the bike than Lucy Charles. I'm not positive about that though. So let's assume that in just about every single race, Lucy Charles is getting out two to three minutes ahead of Daniela Reef in a full Ironman and Daniela Reef is gonna have to work to catch up to her on the bike. Now, Daniela Reef is the best female cyclist in long distance racing. Maybe one of the best female cyclists ever in long distance racing. But there's a really interesting dynamic that Lucy Charles getting out so far ahead of the pack, she's working entirely on her own to hold off a charging Daniela Reef that can use a little bit of the group dynamics, even being, I think it's 11 or 13 meters in behind anyone who's in front of her that'll still save anywhere between about two and four watts. As she's going through the field to catch up to Lucy, she can use a little bit of that pack dynamics to get up to Lucy while Lucy is just out front pedaling on her own. And we saw that in 2017, in the last 40 kilometers of the bike ride in Kona, that Daniela Reef essentially time trialed and boom, broke Lucy Charles riding away from her, leaving her several minutes behind coming into T2. However, 
last weekend in the Half Ironman World Championships, instead of breaking Lucy Charles, Lucy was able to ride on Daniela's wheel the entire length of the bike. And I think this goes to show how Lucy Charles' youth and really inexperience relative to Daniela Reef is a benefit to her. She only took up triathlon four years ago. So just every single year, she's going to get stronger and stronger on the bike. And what we saw in 2017 is that she didn't have the stuff to stay on Daniela's wheel. In 2018 at the half Ironman distance, she did. So let's assume that coming into T2, these two ladies might just be side by side. And then it's gonna come down to the run. Historically and currently, Daniela Reef has been a better runner than Lucy Charles. We saw that in Kona last year. We saw that this year in Port Elizabeth at the half. Daniela is around a three hour full marathoner and around a 115, 117 half marathoner. Lucy Charles has been around a 305 to 310 full marathoner and more like a 120 half marathoner. Can Daniela Reef get quicker? Potentially, but I think the more interesting fact in this is that I think Lucy Charles can get quicker and we can look at some of her times for the past couple of years to see the trajectory that she's on. In Challenge Samarin for 2017 and 2018, her respective times were 125 and 121, a four minute improvement. Ironman Lanzarote in 2016 versus 2017, a 327 versus a 318, a nine minute improvement. And then at the South African Championships, albeit it's a different course, this year she did a 305 full marathon. And then in South Africa at Worlds, she did a 120 half marathon. Now, granted, again, different course than Challenge Samarin, but it's the fastest half marathon that she's done. It seems like every time Lucy Charles is racing, she's getting faster and faster on the run. And this is pretty remarkable because swimmers historically have always had a tough time adapting to that run. Maybe it's the vertical nature of it. Maybe it's the weight bearing nature of it. But if you look at the running strides between Daniela Reef and Lucy Charles, Daniela Reef has some inefficiencies. Her feet are pointed out just a little bit at the back of her running stride. She's got a pretty big movement on her left, left, elbow, I think it's coming from her elbow and it comes across her body. Whereas you look at Lucy Charles running stride, it's classic, it's long, it's smooth. And I think that with that big engine that she's got from swimming, that she's developing in cycling, it's only a matter of time until she develops some callusing in the legs and is able to start putting down some really fast times in running. Does that mean that she is going to be able to beat Daniela Reef? And when is that gonna happen? I think that's when we have to start looking at some of the intangibles. Let's start with age. Daniela Reef is only 31 years old. So as long as she can stay healthy, she potentially has seven to 10 years of really good long distance racing in her. Her endurance is going to be improving a lot, but at that point, once you're in your thirties, you're not necessarily building up speed and strength anymore. Lucy Charles, however, is 24 years old right now. She's able to build endurance. She's able to build speed in both cases. And because she's so young in the sport, she is constantly just putting more and more miles into her legs on the bike, which is already proving to be very beneficial and more miles in her legs on the run, which hopefully she can keep progressing. So she's still on a very strong upward trajectory, whereas I think Daniela Reef is kind of in a holding pattern at the moment. It's a damn good holding pattern. She's unbelievable, but she's fighting father time. I'm fighting father time and he's winning. Injury wise, we did see Daniela Reef have some back problems in early 2017. Conversely, Lucy Charles had a very serious stress fracture at the start of her pro triathlon career. So can either one of them be sidelined by injury? Yes, absolutely. Daniela Reef, with being a little bit older, might be fighting it a little bit more, whereas Lucy Charles might be fighting building running volume while having a history of a stress fracture. It's a bit of a headwind there. 
Now here is the thing that I think is really interesting that Lucy Charles said when we did the podcast with her. By the way, subscribe to the Triathlon Terran podcast wherever you get your podcast. It is the most highly ranked triathlon podcast in the world on iTunes, just saying largely because we have some fantastic guests like Lucy Charles coming up. Lucy Charles said that something that she's got in her mind is potentially going down to the shorter distance events in ITU where she has the swim skills to come out out front. Biking is less of a concern in ITU, but getting into a situation where she has to get fast in the swim, and then she said coming back into long distance racing and bringing that speed into long distance racing, because she's still so young, that's something that she can spend a couple years doing and becoming one of the best long course athletes ever in the history of long course racing. Whereas Daniela has already done the ITU game and brought it into full Ironman distance racing and that's why she's so amazing right now. But Daniela Reef, like I say, I think is in a bit of a holding pattern and I think as long as she stays healthy is probably going to be the athlete to beat until she decides to hang them up. But Lucy Charles is going to be nipping at her heels and the second that Daniela Reef decides to retire, has an injury, gets an illness, I think Lucy Charles is going to be the top pick to unseat Daniela Reef as the best long course female triathlete out there. So how about that for an unanswer? If you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below because with Kona coming up over the next couple of months, we're going to have a lot of these head to head matchups and it's going to be, what's it going to be? I don't know. I didn't really have an end to that sentence. It's going to be good. Kona is always good. Thank you to Lucy Charles for doing the podcast. Thank you to Daniela Reef for being so awesome and giving us inspiration to see you ladies just blow each other's brains out in Port Elizabeth. And see you tomorrow. Later, Trainiacs.